So I'd like to introduce um, a special case of uniform acceleration or constant acceleration. Um, it turns out when you drop an object under the action of just gravity, um, it falls at a uniform rate, a uniform acceleration. Um, and you might say, well, how could that be? Like, I, things with different masses. Imagine a bowling ball and a ping pong ball, right? When I drop those from a given height, um, if they accelerate the same way, they should hit the ground at the same time. And it's hard for me to imagine that's going to happen. Um, imagine a piece of paper and um, a wadded up piece of paper. Do they hit the ground at the same time? Well, probably not. But why? Because of air. And air introduces another interaction, right? If we're just talking about gravity, we should remove the air. So there's a link to a, a YouTube video that I would like for you to watch um, before you keep watching this video. So go ahead. I'll wait. Did you go watch it? Okay, good. Um, okay, so the acceleration due to gravity, just gravity, is a specific number. Sometimes we call that... Um, g right the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared down all right some some um people would call that negative 9.8 meters per second squared but i like to include this sign explicitly and i'll sh i'll tell you what i mean by that in a second um so 9.8 meters per second squared down um you also may have seen this in the past as 9.81 or um, eh, probably 9.81. Here's the point, though. This acceleration due to gravity actually does depend on your elevation and your latitude and longitude because it depends on what's underneath you specifically, um, whether it's uh, some kind of rock or some other kind of rock. Um, the Earth is also not a perfect sphere. So gravity acts a little differently in different places. So what I do is I just use 9.8 meters per second squared, and I don't let it affect my sig figs, if that makes sense. Um, uh, okay, so this modifies our kinematic equations. Um, really, just one of them. All right, so the kinematic equations for what we call free fall. And again, free fall means... Um, um, under action of just of solely gravity. It's a thick pen. Let's see if we can change that. Okay, so I'll read that in case you can't <laughs> read my handwriting. Uh, so free fall just means uh, when something falls under the action of just gravity. Only gravity is acting. Um, and that's why you have to remove the air. Uh, because air would be drag, and drag is a different, uh, another interaction, a second interaction. Um, okay, so what are our kinematic equations? We've got um, V final equals V initial plus um, A delta T. In this case, A is G, and G is 9.8 down. So I'm going to erase A, and I'm going to put... Um, I'm going to put minus G in there. So minus G. Again, I like to put the sign in explicitly. You could call G negative 9.8 and make this a plus sign. Um, but uh, there are reasons that I like to put the negative in explicitly. Um, OK, so what are other equations? Um, X final equals X initial plus V initial delta T plus half a delta t squared. OK. Well, I'm still, I'm going to replace a with minus g. So that needs to be a minus sign. Um, and the motion is vertical. And usually we call the vertical axis y. So I'm going to erase my x's and make them y's. y final, y initial. Also, that means the velocities are also y direction velocities. Remember, velocity is a vector. So we can have x components and y components. Um, and so um, in this case, those are specifically y direction velocities. <laughs> um, we could specify that um, explicitly. 
and call this sure why not let's do that here oops we could call this um, v y initial and v y final um, and v um, y initial uh, and then our third equation is v squared v final squared equals v initial squared plus um, 2a delta x so in this case we're going to do um, v y final squared equals v y initial squared minus 2g delta y does that make sense so I replace the a with a minus g and I replace a delta x with a delta y so these are your equations that govern free fall or really they don't govern it they describe free fall um, they, and they're the same equations. These are the kinematic equations, just um, in the y direction and with a specific acceleration. Okay. So let's do let's do a problem. Let's see. Um, I would like to do example number fourteen. I think. Here, a rock is dropped from a hundred meters above the ground. How long does it take to hit the ground? And how fast is it going when it gets there? Come on. I apologize. I'm trying to zoom out a little bit, but it won't let me. Okay, so a rock is dropped from 100 meters above the ground. Uh, all right, so the first step in any physics problem is to draw a picture. So let's draw a picture. I need a rock. How do you draw a rock? Well. Clearly, rocks are brown. So do I have brown here? I don't know. Sure, that looks like brown. How do you draw a rock? Perfect. Um, and it's dropped from 100 meters above the ground. So let's draw the ground. And we could even label that. Um, that's 100 meters. Okay, and the question is how long and how fast. So how long, uh, now we're identifying, what, what are we solving for? How long is a delta t and how fast is a v, when it hits the ground is, is the end, so it's a v final. It's a vy final, but because y is the only direction here, um, I'm not going to specify. Sorry, I thought my... Oh, no. Eh. Good enough. Since uh, y is the only direction here, I'm not going to specify x or y. Okay, there will be problems where that makes more sense. So uh, I am going to gather, though, some information. This is what I want. So what do I know? I could say what's given. Well, um, y initial is 100 meters. Y final is is the ground we'll call that zero meters again this problem would work if i call the ground 100 but then i would have to call y initial 200 since i'm calling up positive if i don't call up positive then g needs to be negative or sorry positive so there's my positive y-axis um okay i think that's pretty much all i know i don't know delta t i don't know v final um I'm going to make an assumption a rock is dropped. I'm going to make an assumption that V initial is zero. All right, and that's a fair assumption here. Um, because otherwise it, the problem would say the rock is thrown directly downward with a speed of something. Okay, so, um, so I need an equation that relates um, y final, y initial, and maybe v initial to a delta t. Um, so I can go back to my equations. Where are my equations? Well, I started a list of them over here. Ah, oh, but I didn't copy them. Okay, so let's see if we can copy those over. Um, we'll just try it quickly, and if it doesn't work. Great. 
Okay, so added to our list of equations is um, free fall, right? Um, so uniform constant velocity, constant acceleration. Now we have free fall. And we could move this G down here. Nope, not exactly what I meant to do. Beautiful. Okay, so what am I relating? I want to relate um, delta t. I'm trying to solve for delta t. Um, I don't know. So let's do this. I don't know. So let's let's identify. I'm looking for delta t. So delta t shows up here. So I'm probably not going to use that one. Um, I don't know v final, right? I don't know that. So I'm probably not going to use that one. That leaves this equation right here. Circle it in green. Do I know everything else? I know y final, y initial, and v initial, and g. Yeah, fabulous. So let's make all that go away. So this uh, middle equation is what I'm going to use. So let's copy that back over to the other handout. Isn't this fun? I think we're having a great time. So let's... Um, Let's move this over here since we're not using it right this second and copy down the equation. So we said y final equals y initial plus um, v initial delta t minus half g delta t squared. Um, v initial is zero, right? So that means this entire term I can just ignore it. Fabulous. This is this is awesome. This is great. Okay, so um, plugging in these other points, y final is zero meters equals y initial is a hundred meters uh, plus zero. That was this term. Um, minus. Um, you know what? I'm gonna make. Oops. I'm gonna make this go away. Just give myself a little more space. And say minus. Um, 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 2. So uh, Sometimes people actually plug in g um, as a number here and go g over 2 as your uh, as just a, a number built into this equation, but I like it as a variable. Uh, times delta t squared. Okay, so that's just algebra to solve for delta t. So if you do that algebra, um, you get... Um, I had it worked out over here. Hold on a second. You get 4.7 seconds. So, oh, bugger. Delta T equals 4.7 seconds. And you can you can track the the units for this. Um, so when you you can let's let's algebra this just ever so briefly. So I can add this to the other side. So then it's both positive. So I've got positive 9.8 over 2 meters per second squared times delta t squared equals positive 100 meters. Um, and then I'm dividing meters per second squared by meters. Uh, nope, sorry, it's the other way. Uh, then I'm dividing... Um, meters by meters per second squared, which is second squared. And then I'm square rooting to get um, a, a single second. So I don't have to double check it this way because by choosing the SI system, um, if I plug everything in in SI units, my answer comes out in SI units. That's just the way it's built. Um, okay, so that's great. Um, how fast is it going when it hits the ground? So now I'm solving for v final. And frankly, at this point, I can use either of the other two equations. Um, I can go back to my equation list, equations, and see, I have one more here, yeah, that uh, now that I know delta t, I know this guy and this guy and this guy. So I could solve for it here. I also know that is 100 meters, right? It's actually negative 100 meters. Um, I know this guy. I know this guy. Again, I now know 
all of these. Okay, actually, this is the equation I used to solve for, for that. So either of these two equations will, will work. Let's use um, let's use the second equation. All right, in the the worked out solutions that I've posted to Canvas, um, I use the first equation, but this will show us that either one will work. Okay, so let's use that second equation to make some of my markups go away. Okay, so to use the second equation, again, I like to fill out the equation with um, without with just variables first. So we're doing v final squared equals v initial squared minus 2g delta delta y delta y come on why did it go away okay we'll do it again v final squared equals v initial squared minus 2g delta y okay and again i'm leaving off the subscripts because explicitly we're only doing y there's no confusion between y and x in this problem there will be in the future but that's okay okay so v final squared equals so I uh, just need to plug in v final squared equals v initial is zero meters per second, you know, squared minus two times 9.8 meters per second squared times delta y. Okay, so you might look at this and say, hey, isn't there going to be a problem? I'm going to square root, um, and that is a negative sign in it. Isn't that going to be a problem? Uh, because this is going to give me something imaginary if it's negative, if it's negative, right? But what is delta y? Well, Delta y is, um, let's do this. Delta y is y final minus y initial. And y final is 0 meters. And y initial is 100 meters. So delta y is negative 100 meters, which makes sense because I'm going down, right? My change in y really is negative. So there's a negative 100 here. And that negative and that negative are going to make a, a positive which is going to make this math work out beautifully so what I get when I do this math is um, four points uh, 46 point two meters per second okay so my point here uh, my take home in this this part of this problem is that um, you have to be careful with signs right you have to be careful that um, when you have a delta y it is a vector, and so positive or negative matters. Um, here's another point I want to make. Is v final positive or negative? Well, it should be negative, right? Because when this rock is dropped, when it hits the ground, here's my rock, right? When this rock hits the ground, its velocity is down. There's v final, right? When that rock hits the ground, its velocity should be negative. Okay, why didn't it come out negative? Well, when you square root, you get two answers, right? When you square root, it's actually positive or negative. But the physical situation here says actually the negative is what's right. So I did lose a little information by using this equation. Or really, I just need to be careful with the math. The uh, final velocity is down, so I should put a negative on that. Um, and that, I mean, it comes from intuition, right? You can look at the problem and say, well, yeah, when this hits the ground, it's going to be going down. Um, that looks a little gross. There. Okay. So, um, yeah, practice some more problems like this. It'll be very useful for you. Thanks for watching.